Introducing Next Gen 50, the new home. School up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, the great tackle! Oh, it's not good enough! One, two, skip a few and with the wheels! Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What a kick! All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 15. Hello and welcome to Trinity School for the Under-18 Schools Cup quarter-final between Trinity and Berkhamsted. It is a massive game. Three teams already through Barnard Castle, Kirkham Grammar School and Sherburn, as you may have seen on our live stream last week when they beat Harrow seven points to three. Today, though, it's over to South East London. Trinity against Berkhamsted. I'm here alongside Stashia Long from Trinity School. Stasha, very nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, it's going to be a good one this afternoon. A big buzz. The crowd's already filling up. The car park's barely a space left. Everyone's pretty excited, aren't they? There's such a buzz here at Trinity today. We've obviously got this game going on on pitch one and we've got our under 14s playing Dulwich College on pitch two. So a real whole school vibe going on and I'm sure that bank will fill up very quickly. It certainly will by the looks of things. And of course, the home team, Trinity School, led by number eight, Archie Pearson, with Will Pert Smith and Khalil Elaine in the back row alongside him. In the second row, Joe Connolly and Pierce Cummins. And up front, in the front row, Kane Fleary, Ross Sinclair, and George Papa, Paps as they call him. Finn Kennedy, Kennedy rather, and Connor Byrne at halfbacks, and Bertie Little and Ollie Bailey in the centres. Sean Oganyumi and Roma Matabalavu on the wings. And Josh Bellamy at fullback, winner of the Allred Trophy back in 2020. On the bench, Joe Marvin, Sam Medcroft, Ben Young, and head coach Ian Kench. Berkhamstead, well, they won the Daily Mail Trophy on Saturday. Big, big week for them. And they are led by outside centre Joe Penensi today in the absence of their usual number eight. Penensi's alongside Tobias Elliott and his halfbacks, Charlie Montero and Car Cameron Robenheimer. In the back three, Ben Litherland, Daniel Barnett and Ben Westcott. And up front, in the front row, James Isaacs, Ben Oldham, Charlie Keith. Second row, George Rowlands and Casper Jack. And in the back row, James Boylan, Freddie Chabra and Luca Fai, who comes in for the missing Oliver Webb. Charlie Woodman C, Charlie Doe, Jack Hodgson, Finn McDonald, Alex Rutter on the bench. Head coach, Ben Mooney. Is it going to be a big, big special few days for Berkhamsted reaching the semi-finals, following on from that Daily Mail trophy, or will it be Trinity? Well, we're going to find out very, very shortly. These two, of course, have a long history in these age groups. They were joined, I think, they're under 15s. They were both in 2019, traveling along quite nicely, both ended by Harrow, both in fairly dramatic circumstances. Can they go one further as under 18s? What do you reckon? I really hope so. I think whatever happens today, I think we're in for a real treat in terms of the spectacle that these boys are going to put on for us. And I think it will be one of the best games of schoolboy rugby that you're going to see. I certainly hope so. And the teams are emerging now. Trinity out first. Berkhamstead coming out from the other side. They're going to meet in the middle. It is a proper tete-a-tete. -a, -tete. a schoolboy rugby classic in the offing, perhaps in this under-18 Schools Cup quarter-final. We are moments away. The two teams ready to huddle. And some fantastic players out there. Look out for the battle in the centres. Some good players in there. Tobias Elliott at 12. The England under-18 start up against Bertie Little. A big old unit aiming to be a sports psychologist as well. Can he win that mental battle in the midfield? We will find out. 
very, very soon. And these are the moments, aren't they? Nervous moments, big games. They don't come around games of this stature for schoolboys very often, but when they do, the nerves are really quite spectacular, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, a lot of these boys played in the under-15 uh, Vars final when they got, th in the plate final, sorry, when they played at Worcester Warriors uh, and won that. So they've got some experience of, of playing on the big stage and hopefully that'll help calm things down if there are any nerves jangling out there. And so we are just about ready for kickoff here at Trinity School. It's the fullback, Josh Bellamy, the Aura Trophy champ from 2020, remember, who's ready to kick us off. Part of the Harlequins youth setup, and he hangs it high. Berkhamstead returning it through Tobias Elliott. Trinity with an early chance for the counter, but a big hit from Berkhamstead. These boys are really up for this. They've had to make a lot of changes since Saturday. A very quick turnaround. Trinity have had slightly longer to prepare. That also means slightly longer to think about it. Hoisted high towards Westcott. Westcott looks back towards Bellamy, who finds a bit of space. Early kick tennis here. These are just feeling each other out a bit, aren't they? Yeah, we thought this might happen early on. I think the, the kicking is going to be really key today. And alongside us, running third wheel, as David outside, outside. Tobias Elliott stabs it through. Tricky one there for Bellamy to deal with. Just about getting up to the 22. Trinity will set up for the box kick, which gives me a chance, as I was saying before, to introduce the third wheel in this little commentary team. David Bampo. David, very nice to have you along. I'm so sorry to hear that you're injured, unable to play in this one, but excited to see the boys. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. It's been a big build-up for this game, but I think we're all ready to see the outcome now. Yeah, it's going to be very, very exciting. We have our first line out here. Questioned earlier over who was going to be throwing it, and it is James Isaac, usually at hooker, but he's moved to the loose head in Alex O'Driscoll's absence. Hello to Alex if he's watching. In at hooker is Ben Oldham. But it's scrappy ball for Berkhamstead, and they have to tidy that up at the back. Robenheimer doing a good job. Had a good lesson before this game on the pronunciation of his name, so apologies if I keep getting it wrong, but I believe Robenheimer is where we're going with down. Sorry, guys. The Berkhamstead outside half. Apologies, I don't know where you're going left Tense now, opening. Back. Yeah, it's been fairly frenetic, actually. It's been, the ball's been in play quite a long time, which will be good for the Second teams. I'll feel that that's given Second them the opportunity time, okay. to settle. Nine, go that way. First scrum of the day. Charlie Montero. Front of the referee there, ready to put the ball in. I had the pleasure of popping along to watch the game against Dulwich where Berkhamstead sealed that Daily Mail Trophy title. Fortunately, a few yards down from where I live, which allowed me the chance to check out a few of these players in advance. And I can tell you that Charlie Montero had a good game there at nine, buzzing around in difficult circumstances. Same as you, offside with you. Yeah, come to me then, please. Referee just policing the offside lines. We can do this for a while, lads. There you go. a very thorough five yards back from that scrum by the looks of things. Perhaps Berkhamstead are just giving themselves a bit of extra room. Crouch! Five! Set! Montero gets it in. Stop, that's good, that's good. Strong scrummaging work from Trinity. That's the sort of thing they're going to feed off today, isn't it? They're going to really build. It's going to get the crowd going as well. And the turnover to Boot, holding the man up with the mall. Wonderful. 
think Kennedy will be really pleased with the pressure he was able to put on there nine then. Set piece is going to be so key in this game, but having the other players around who are just savvy and aware of what they can do to influence the game will be so important as well. And David, uh, that scrum must have pleased you. It did indeed. Paps and Kane at the front of that scrum just pushing us. Um, hopefully we'll get so many more of the scrums and win them. There's another opportunity here for a big scrum from Trinity. They hold it up well, starting to cave a bit on the tight head side, but the ball gets out. And they're on the charge into the heart of the midfield. Quick ball for Trinity. Now they look to go wide. Solid work in defence from the Berkhamstead skipper, Panesi. Trinity though on the charge. Yes. Flat. Through the line. One on one. Trinity on the charge here. But the penalty goes their way. Well, it was a huge charge there from. Well, you might have to jump in and tell me I couldn't make the number out there. Yeah, that was Kane Fleary coming through on a tip line. That was outstanding from him. He's such a mobile front row player. Really excited to see him stretch his legs today. Well, Fleary certainly giving us plenty of excitement there. Trinity now with the opportunity for a penalty right in front of the sticks and an early lead in this game. Look at the flat pass, the flat line. Rounds the first tackler. And then Berkhamstead not rolling away in that tackle, getting over the ball and flopping somewhat, and it will give Bellamy a chance for a 3-0 lead. And wow, Stashy, that's quite the, quite the line break. Yeah, he's been known to do that regularly. It's, it's, the, the boys won't be surprised to see him making those lines, and he's so agile and mobile for, for someone his size. Uh, yeah, he, he's always going to beat defenders, and he's always going to run that hard line. And it says here in my notes, 17 years old and 102 kilograms. In pretty good shape as well. Frightening. Yeah, he can certainly move. Very, very powerful young man. And, and really, really great to see how much he's improved over the last few years. I coached him when he was under 14s uh, and showed massive potential then. Always loved the physicality, but really taking his rugby seriously now. And I'm delighted to see him having such a big impact early on in this game. Stay behind. Berkhamstead then behind early. Unbeaten this season, of course. 12 wins from their 13 Outside. games, just a single draw against their name. That was against Harrow way now back when. But they're behind here and they've got work to do. Trinity in their own 22 and looking to escape. Tackle red. And doing so with some barnstorming work. Go on, go on, play. No, that's good, it's out, yes, it's out. Ball out Back quickly roots. though, Berkhamstead swoop. Leave him alone, Red. Tidied up by Trinity though. Yeah. Still there. Use it, nine. Move five, red. Tight, yep. aggressive work in the fringes from both sides in the early Time exchanges in. here. He's outside. Rising beneath it, though. Move. Daniel Barnett, I think no, it was, for Berkhamstead. When you're on the floor, you must release, then roll away. No release from Trinity. Gives Berkhamstead a chance must to get themselves a bit of territory. Away. Yeah, Trinity would be disappointed with that. They'd the worked tackle. really hard then to get themselves out of the uh, out of the 22. A couple of loose balls there that were dealt with well. Kalila Lane dropping on the ball that bobbled underneath him. But they'll be disappointed the to have lost a bit of territory there. Always difficult, I think, in that situation, not to buy it almost. It's, it's so tempting Andy, as a player when you get yourself over to I can buy a couple of seconds here, I can buy a couple. Seven that one. Perhaps a, li a little too easy. Yeah, I think I think that was harsh, actually, because I think he, he was had a good contest for the ball then as the tackle was being made and pretty sure he'd ripped that before the ball went down, but referee's interpretation was that he hadn't rolled away at the tackle. Isaacs with the three then. Berkhamstead just outside the 22. Stolen by Trinity, though. Tidied up nicely by Finn Kennedy. Scored a try via Epsom earlier in this competition, did Kennedy. Yeah, that was all six foot six of uh, Piers Cummings then, used to its max, getting a fingertip on that early on in that line out. He'd be really pleased with that. Frightening the size of teenagers these days. Save from my lofty five foot eight stature. 
spilled by Berkham said and Trinity are really putting the pressure on here early on. I've seen a couple of moments like that. They're really up for this early doors. The speed of the defensive line here. Yeah, I think that's been very inherent of their season so far. That's what they've taken most pride in, I think. Coaches put a lot of effort and intensity into it throughout the season just on that defence and just being absolutely resolute in making those hits, making those tackles stick. Uh, and it's working for them at the moment. Absolutely is. And they're key in these early moments to capitalise on these little momentum building moments in games. We've seen it so often. We saw it at Sherborne Harrow. When you get a chance, you have to take it. Same again, it just went round. Trinity have done that. One visit, three talk, points. There's your mark. Little buzz around the ground. The under 14s on the other pitch have kicked off. The whole school feels like it's descended on the grounds here at Trinity. Use it now, please. Thank you. Ball is out. Trinity go to the left hand side. Yeah. Yeah, that's out. Looking to really spread the play. Now Take they come out. tight. No, leave it, leave it. Leave it. Thank you. And it looks like we're seeing a tactic no, start no, to emerge where they really no, attack the heart of that Berkhamstead defence around the fringes, try to get good yardage, and it seems to be paying off. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. We've not yet seen yeah. Berkhamstead really competing at the rucks, and I, I think whether that changes depending on where they are in the field, but we're, yeah, we're yet to see much competition at the, at the rucks. No, he didn't hit the field. As a way break Trinity, Berkhamstead flying out the line, creating the dog leg. Yeah. Into the 22 now for Trinity huge opportunity and they go short again these fringes providing so much joy for the Croydon side short again they go tense moments here and they will keep picking and going four five attempts around the corner now on to the big man Cleary around the corner this time Forward they go. Got to be careful not to get held up and give away the Hands goal line up. dropout. Berkhamstead are marking the wide options though, so tight looks like the way to go. They go left this time. Series of right hand drives. The space is there and they across the line. Ball knocks on just at the crucial moment for Trinity. So unfortunate there were Trinity, Berkhamstead survived just Stop, about, but these are dangerous Come moments down. and we are Red seeing, ball. as we were saying, that that work around the fringes is tough. Yeah, it's going to be there energy sapping for, for both teams, keeping it close, using right. using numbers to just track around the corner will be difficult. Berkhamstead are rightly pleased with that result, just really unfortunate there, Archie just knocking that on just before the line, but still feeling like Trinity are in the ascendancy here and putting all the pressure on at the okay, moment. We start again, we start the process again. You ready? They yeah, that's okay. Are. No, that's fine. No, that's absolutely fine. You tell me when you're ready, sir. And the game Happy. may only be 12 minutes long, but as we were saying before, Happy, these sir. moments are so, so Go. crucial in games that are often decided by hardly anything. 7-3, one of the other quarterfinals was. No, straight out of the tunnel. Let's do it again. Straight out of the tunnel, guys. Same again. Go again. Come straight out. David, you know that you know the leaders out there. What sort of messages do you think they give to each other out there? Just keep them calm when that's going on. At the moment, it's just to be ruthless. Keep going at them. Keep putting pressure on them. Because as we've seen now, there was one short period of us in our 22, and now we're on their five meter line. Just keep putting pressure on them. Keep the knife, Do not touch him now. Get out now. Just leave him. Keep the keep the pressure on from a Trinity perspective, from a Berkhamstead perspective get the ball away and get it away That's long and that is exactly what I thought they'd done in fact it's only gone up to about the 22. Yeah fairly small dead ball area down that yeah, end of the pitch right. and Berkham said didn't have much wiggle room asking. then and that kick under pressure again from Finn How Kennedy many, Five, please. not made it outside the 22. Trinity will want to to launch another wave of attack you, from here. Six. Thank you. Certainly is a huge opportunity and Pierce Cummins set, yeah. surely in the target of this line out. All six foot six of him, as you said. Will he be the decoy, though? 
collected safely at the tail. Still moving. The mall gets building. No, he's on fine. He hasn't interfered. And it's on the charge. Still moving. Keep it up, Brett. Seemingly at the moment, little that can be done to resist this Trinity forward pack. Just begins to stall as they move around the fringe. Referee says they've played it once. Turns into a tackle now. Safely brought back for Trinity. Use it now. Kennedy looks short again. This time it's Ollie Bailey taking yes, it in. Out. That was out. Kennedy under all sorts of pressure. Tobias Elliott there making the big play and winning the penalty. Okay. Yeah, right. Showing his quality, the England centre. A huge moment. Okay. Let him just change his boots, guys, okay? Holding on, guys, okay? The penalty, we're just holding well, what he does. Good spot. Boots, so. The clock is off. From Elliott. What do do them then? Okay, we'll play it off the Timing that just Clocks as Kennedy on. had the ball above the Again, ground and then getting himself get back on his feet for the turnover. Kenneth, that'll do it. Thank you. I'll put them on this line, man. It's okay. For the opposition. The old blue, blue, this is you. Team of three officials here. All decked out in their yep. splendid That's London you, Society yeah. yellow. How many? Five. Look at the size of Cummins Same. compared to the rest of the pack. Turns lift to this time, but okay. Berkhamstead go to the middle and look around the fringe. It's a great break from Montero. Surging into the 22 now. Is he isolated? No, they managed to get with him. Quick ball to the right-hand side for Berkhamstead. Well shackled though by Trinity. Berkhamstead though with their first real sustained possession in the game and they're right on the front foot here now, as Boylan on gets on the charge this time. Robenheimer dancing this way and that can't get the ball away though and he's tackled yeah. by Will Pert smith I think. Tackle now, leave it, Blue! Berkhamstead looking to the right hand side, Elliot such a difficult man to put down. He's so strong in that centre Tackle channel. Right again, they go. Robenheimer looks wide. Spilled though, and the knock on saves Trinity. Again, the Trinity defence holding firm. Knock up. Some big hits okay. coming in there. Yes, we have a man down, gentlemen. Over there. Well, I think what was telling there was that Berkhamstead got on the front foot really for the first time all game. But every time they made ground, they were repelled back again. They had to go through the hard work time and time again. Yeah, it all came from the back of that line out. Berkhamstead just spotting that gap at the back. And that got them on the front foot. It's a lovely bit of work from Montero, though. Spotting the gap in that scene between the back of the line out and the fly half. OK, but I need to replace him if he's going off. Thank you. Ultimately, though, all comes to naught for Berkhamstead and Trinity will Come have on, to put please. into the scrum. Bit of a Go delay on, as we Come get on. the players all back in one piece. A couple of substitutions by the look of things. Trinity have had to bring on scrum called a replacement. On knock -off. We'll clarify Guys, we that in just in here, a second. I'm just trying with you, okay? I'm doing my best. Uh, ben Young coming onto the pitch, replacing yeah. Pierce Cummins for the moment. Ben's been very good recently during this season and has come on and made an impact, so hopefully he'll do that right now. Crouch. Ben Young, well, just as well you're here, David, or I was, I was stumped. Set. Ben Young, by the way, an England under-17 Corfball Five. captain. It's See okay. if he can pull some of those skills out. Trinity clear their line straight down the middle of the field, the old torpedo kick. It's well dealt with by Westcott. He carries hard, but he is taken down. Berkhamstead looking to counter. They've got numbers here on the outside. Robenheimer looks to Elliott, just can't get the offload away. He was well dealt with. Trinity have turned it over, living dangerously there. Outside when it first happened. But Kennedy with a chance to clear his line. He just hoofs it downfield with the box kick, but it's another chance for a Berkhamstead counter. And Westcott again. He's well brought down again, though. Montero to Robenheimer. Stabs it through. There is space. Bellamy looks to tidy up. Ball bouncing about. So difficult. And he's taken into touch by James Boylan. 
dangerous moments for Trinity. Yeah, really high pressure then on their defence. Berkham said really exploiting you, using quick ball. So they stay to gap the shift. Some tired and sore bodies out there already, no, I feel, fair, from both John, sides. Apologies. Sorry, that's your mic. Oh, sorry. But some apologies. big carries there from the Berkham said runners. They're moving the point of Nine contact five, really yeah. nicely. Seven calls. Just unfortunate they're well, losing the ball hang on, in that tackle by Connor Byrne. Crucial tackle by Connor Byrne. Another of the England under 18 squad members on his Clocks fellow off, England player, Have Tobias Elliott, and a, a crucial Clocks intervention Clocks stopping that pitch. offload from getting away. Yeah, and we've got another change. Bertie Little to come off, and Sam Medcraft has replaced him in the centres. Hopefully that's nothing serious for him, and we might see him again this game. And it looks as though we're not far from the reintroduction of Pierce Cummins in the second row. See him pacing around in the backfield. Knocked on here by Red. He does not enjoy not being on the pitch, <laughs> so he will be desperate to get back on as soon as he can. Prowling like a caged lion. Berkhamsted lost the line out. Trinity just getting a hand on and we will have a scrum down in the 22. Trinity ball. Happy. Crouch. Sam Medcraft, you can see there, on for Bertie Little in the centres. Trinity then, through Burn, clear it long, it's straight down Westcott's throat again. We've seen he likes a counter, and he does again this time. Well shackled. Berkhamsteads having, having had very little possession in the opening 10-15 minutes over the last five minutes have started to take control but they stabbed that ball dead and we'll be going back for a scrum down and welcome respite once again. Yeah I think it was the right option from Berkhamstead there there was some space in behind Bellamy did have it covered but they had numbers and I think they'll be disappointed that they didn't use that to try and exploit the overlap. And as you said earlier, tight dead ball lines here, so you've okay. got to be really Let's accurate with those stabs Please. through, haven't you? Who's going? Yeah, I think in a Archie's game that's going, going to be as close as this, I think possession's going to be really key, and I think maybe the coaches will be slightly disappointed that they Who's gave away off? what was probably the, the start of a platform for quite Seven, a good Bertie, attack there, just outside the Trinity 22. And of course, the great privilege of having you alongside me is that you do coaching, so you can tell me something. I would be coaching to actually try and get the ball to be to be staying in the uh, in the goal line area because you're going to come back for a uh, for a goal line dropout, which really is easy possession to receive because you're always sort of on the edge of the 22. What are you saying to your lads? I think I think possession's so key, and I think as soon as you release that ball, you're, you're providing an opportunity for competition, and it can go either way. So it's just a risky option for me. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I'm not a coach. Kennedy kicks long, could be a 50-22. Unbelievably skillfully dealt with by Berkhamsted, but it's a judge to have gone out anyway. And it's a 50-22 for those of you that don't know the law. If you kick the ball from inside your own half and it bounces out into the opposition 22, you get possession back with the line out. And that could be a crucial moment. Yeah, I think he did really well to try and keep it in field, but even if it had, it had gone forwards. Oh. Maybe a bit unlucky that the line out's gone, but as you say, it was probably forward anyway. So one way or another, Trinity possession. But you've got to admire the courage to try something like that. Yes, boy. Scrappy ball off the line out, tidied up, I think, by Trinity. And they'll have a rumble around the fringes again, I suspect. And they certainly do, carrying this time Ross Sinclair. Five Scotland under 18, water polo cap Sinclair. And there's Something to talk about with water polo here at Trinity when we get a chance. Seems to be a little hidden gem here in South London. Trinity, they're working through the phases. Now they look wide. Burn feeding his centres. But it's ripped away by Elliot. What an influence he's having already. It's hoofed long, racing back is Bellamy. Bellamy has to counter. The chase is good. Gets the offload away. Buys his team a bit of time. Good now, thank you. And now Trinity get the bodies there, slow the ball up. They'll have a quick rumble around the corner while they try to free up Kennedy. Tackle four, move. And now Kennedy with the box kick, but it's charged down. Scrappy, scrappy ball. Just a knock on, gentlemen. 
And it was the giant James Boylan playing at six, but he's been playing in the second row through most of the season. It's only in Will Stanford's absence that he's moved into the back row, and he certainly showed his uh, stretch of a second row there. Yeah, I think I think Trinity used Sorry, the wrong I'm option there to kick because there was not enough cover for Finn at nine, uh, and that just allowed a really easy charge down for Berkhamstead and, and Trinity back under pressure in their own 22. Yeah, it seems as if it was, they were showing the patience to try and free him up, but not quite the patience to then, once he was free, give it, give it another phase just to uh, allow the structure to get there. In their own 22, they opt to run it. Burn creates a two on one, releasing Matabalavu rather down the right hand side. Ball stays in as he tries to offload it. So Berkham said, Have it back. The game really starting to open up now. Still 3 0 Trinity though, despite that. Berkhamstead now taking a leaf out of the Trinity book and looking tight. Charging through these short fringes. Tackle now, move white. No height. Yeah. Big carrying head first from Casper Jack. Perhaps not the most advisable part of the body to lead with. Thank you. But he looks like he's okay. Rovenheimer, late, late feed, but the offload goes to Trinity hands and once again they live to fight another day. This time they look to give Kennedy a bit more protection. The referee calls the ball out. Berkhamstead. Delightful little trip from Westcott. He's gathered it himself. Westcott looking a real threat in that fullback channel. And Berkhamstead will have the penalty. I think it was a high tackle coming in. It was. Ben Young's there just with a high tackle. Really difficult in that situation when you're scrambling, but a lovely little option through from Berkhamstead. Just spotted the space in behind. No sweeper in for Trinity. Just feel Berkhamstead are looking dangerous in attack. Just can't quite finish off with that last pass or that last option. But I think credit to Trinity's defence, the double tackling working really, really well. And I think Berkhamstead maybe will be getting a little bit frustrated that... They're having a lot of possession, but they're actually not making much ground with it. Certainly are. We see here it's delightful little chip from Westcott gathered. And as you say, so difficult in defence. That'll be Robenheimer that stands over the penalty. And as he lines up that kick, David, on those sort of tackles where it drifts a bit high, presumably when you're being coached, you're now getting coached much more than you would have been when you were younger about tackle technique, when to tackle, when not to tackle, how to tackle. Yes, we have been. Mr. Kench has been very keen on our low tackling around the waist. Um, it's quite disappointing that this one just slipped up, but understandably, um, we would look to keep our shots low, keep the pressure up and force them to kick to us again. Absolutely, and it's, a, it's been a real sea change over the last couple of seasons, the way that that coaching technique has adapted, the way the tackling has adapted. But more in the present, Berkham said have levelled things 3-3. It was Robenheimer with the penalty leveling up from Josh Bellamy's earlier effort. Real Trinity Berkhamstead in this under-18 Schools Cup quarter-final. These two have been so good all year. Trinity undefeated since October. Berkhamstead undefeated in total. Somewhere, something is going to have to give. Thank you. Ball is not live now. There you go, red. Five court, five court. Feels as though things have just switched. The first 10 minutes was all Trinity. Berkham said have ridden the storm a bit, seeming to start to get on top of the territory now. Yeah, they definitely had more possession in the second half of this first half. Trinity will be pleased with how they've defended but it will be absorbing a lot of their energy having had to, to put some big hits in to prevent that Berkhamstead attack. Well, that energy balance could well be a crucial factor in this game. Berkhamstead on a three-day turnaround. As Kennedy is charged down again. 
We'll come back for the knock-on, but no advantage. Just I think possibly some work to be done on protecting Kennedy um, a bit more. I would come to yeah, me, I, I mean, I I've noticed that the referee is calling that the ball's the out. Line, no, uh, it's hard one from one where we're standing to see sort of what's causing that, but I think it's putting Finn under a little bit of pressure because he's maybe just not having the time that he's used to or not got the space between him and the defence that he might want. Yeah, we'll need to take a look at that. Happy. Perhaps he's using his hand to bring the ball back or something, and the referee just not quite happy with how that's going. Yeah, absolutely. At least let him have a bind before you bind. That's all right. Referee Thank you. making the point that he's not going to blow a penalty if the players can't actually have a bind, which is, I suppose, a fair point. As we pause this scrum, gives us an opportunity just to talk about one of our partners, Coach Logic, who helped make all of this possible. Without them, we really could not do this. Coach Logic helping with player-led analysis, and you can get £100 off with Coach Logic. If you use the code NEXTGEN15, that's NEXTGEN XB. And a huge thank you to them. We really could not do it without them. And we come back for it. another scrum. Things getting quite scrappy here. Yeah, I think both teams will be really looking forward to half time now just to regroup and regather and get their thoughts after what's been quite a frenetic and very high physicality first half. Certainly has a flying by as well. Just about five minutes left in the half. Berkhamstead with a great attacking opportunity here. Centre field, a huge blind side, and they look to use it. Fai gets away, gets it wide to Barnett. Barnett one on one with Bellamy, stabs it through with his foot. Bellamy gets in the way. It's a scramble in the goal line. Both sets of players appealing that they got it down first. Wait, wait a minute, please. I do not, not have a grounding myself. Referee says he hasn't got a grounding. No try. Goal line drop. Touch agrees, so we'll come for the goal line dropout. A crucial moment in the game as Barnett went scorching down the right hand side, put boot to ball. We see it here as Fai that got away gets it away with the offload and well. Crucial, crucial bit of action. Three players diving for the floor as Robenheimer just sends a drop goal wide. Three player scramble and nervy moments. Yeah, all came from the scrum there. Trinity back row just got caught a little bit eyes down, didn't quite pick up the man coming around the back of the scrum and that just allowed a, a 2v1 situation there that meant Sean Ogunyemi was just turned on that wing and had too much to deal with. Josh Bellamy tracking across at fullback, having to make that tackle, hence why it wasn't obstruction against him. But yeah, Trinity under some pressure there. Josh Bellamy defending how I like all my fullbacks and to defend. I am making a tackle no matter what. Yes, you are now. Backwards. Birkenstead claimed the spilled ball, no, but tidied up by Bellamy. Off the foot. Kennedy. Looks short. Now they go out the back. Through the hands, down to the right-hand side. But again, ball bobbles about. Popped back towards Berkham, said he knock it on, and then the ball drifts into touch. I think we will come back for... We'll have a line-out, in fact. Yeah, again, I think Trinity just trying a little bit too hard there to keep the ball alive. I know Sam was trying to avoid going into touch there, but... They're playing some risky rugby by doing that. If Berkhamstead had got that ball to hand, there was nobody in behind down this near wing to us. And that could have been risky. Oh, well, we said he was like a caged lion at the back of that pitch. And Pierce Cummins returns to the fray. A big, big moment for Trinity, because when he was on the field, that power game around the tight fringes was working really nicely. Yeah, he's certainly dominant in the, in the set piece. They'll be yes. pleased to have him back on the pitch. Yes, Berkhamstead win the line up. Now they look out the back. Strong carrying in Thank midfield, you. but Trinity the equals to it in defence. Robenheimer starting to get the ball through his hands, but this time gets it through his hands forward. Yeah, I think Berkhamstead have certainly tried to play flatter passes now because they're not breaking through the Trinity defence. So they're really trying to punch holes, but with that comes the risk of those forward passes because any missed time of a pass when you're trying to play that flat to the gain line just can cause errors. So really good pressure coming in, forcing that forward pass there. What's noticeable there, though, from a sort of schoolboy point of view is that that's probably on the hoof the players 
deciding we're going to play a bit flatter. Now, it's not worth that time, but it's a, it's a real sign of actually just how good these guys are on both sides of the field and, and, and how much they understand what they're doing. Yeah, very good rugby brains out there. I think from 1 to 18 across all teams, they'll be very savvy. They will have talked about lots of scenarios and that's helping to make the, the great spectacle that we're being treated to at the moment. We certainly Tackle are another low-scoring, tight cup game. Backwards. These are the ones that build the tension all around the ground. And you can see no, it continues to up, fill up the up. background of your yes, screen there. Look at the size of that crowd. Here on a Four Tuesday down. afternoon. Work from home couldn't have come for a better time, I suppose, for some people on that touchline. Yeah, lots of alumni here supporting their old school. Really strong rugby culture, ethos and, uh, and heritage here at Trinity. So, yeah, the 16th man will be playing its part today, I think. Well, and of course, this little corner of London, an absolute hotbed for schoolboy rugby within a, a stone's throw. Yeah, you have good. Trinity, Whitgift and John Fisher, three of the most storied names in schoolboy rugby. And yes, of course, Trinity, as we come back for a loose bit of kicking. Trinity knocked out Whitgift, who are in effect the reigning Scott champions of, of this competition. They won it in 2019 and reached the final Scott in 2020 ball. before Redball. COVID got Ball's in the way down. of the final. Trinity in their last game in this cup run, knocked out the reigning champions and local rivals. So that just tells you how good this Trinity side is. But it must be cool having such a sort of, within a stone throw, such intense quality yeah, I think you've, you've got the independent schools. You've also got some really strong state schools as well. You've got John Fisher and Wimbledon College uh, who have fantastic rugby programmes who, who we play quite regularly. And, yeah, certainly some, some of the big-name schools as well. Uh, and always good to get, a, get the win in a Croydon derby. I know it means a huge amount to the boys and a, a really comprehensive victory for, for Trinity against the, that Whitgift team. It certainly was. 22-10 in that game. In this game, it's 3-all. Trinity and Berkhamsted going at it. Trinity looking to go further than ever before in this competition. Berkhamsted 2. Berkhamsted looking to earn two titles in one year. Can they do it? You're going to have to get through this tight battle first. Yeah, I think the last time a Trinity team got to, to this point in the tournament was when we had Gabriel Libertoye lighting up the wings. I remember it well. Ibitoye on the wing. Charlie Fatoma, I think it was, playing fly half. What a, what a glorious schoolboy player he was as well. Berkhamstead on the charge. Here in 2021, Robenheimer looks short to Elliot. Elliot breaks the first tackle. Good good ground. Robenheimer this time puts boot to ball. Bellamy, though, on the run, has an opportunity and he gets around the first man. Now he's searing down the left hand touchline. Almost hauled down, but not quite. Tries to get the offload away. Bobbing, weaving, and spilling everywhere, but it's controlled by Trinity in the end. They've got to get the ball wide, you've got to think. They managed to do so, the bounce pass, often one of the more dangerous balls you can give, a delightful offload now, and another. Trinity on the charge. Ross Sinclair goes to ground. A bit of order brought to proceedings. And now they're going into the heart of the midfield, but it's knocked on. And that glorious play all comes to nothing, but what excitement from Bellamy. Yeah, he's so dangerous with ball in hand, particularly running back from broken field. Got the ability to play fly half as well as he does fullback, but him running at broken field is just so dangerous. He's got electric feet and pace. I'm really disappointed Sean Ogunyemi didn't get his hands on the end of that because he is thundering down the wing and is so difficult to stop. But Connor Byrne did really well, and then it went through the hands of pretty much all the water polo players on the team, hence the offloading. Which brings me on nicely to the water polo. Under 15 water polo champions, was it? And we've got like 
three, four lads with caps from various different nations at water polo. Unbelievable. Yeah, we, our head of aquatics here, Sean King, uh, was a London 2012 water polo Olympian. So good pedigree from uh, from the coaching team there. Um, but yeah, I'd say it's uh, it's a very, very successful sport for us. Uh, numerous national titles for, for the boys and the girls. And yeah, just uh, those boys have such transferable skills that it's great to see them in, in play. And Trinity, we're, we're really positive around players doing multi-sports and not specialising young. And I think giving players the opportunity to, to excel in multiple sports, I think, gives such an edge to the teams. But also as individuals, I think it, it really brings that multi-skill set to them. And, and you're seeing that on display today. You certainly are. And hopefully some of that skillful rugby is going to translate into tries as we move into the second half here at Trinity at half time in this under 18 schools cup quarterfinal. It's Trinity three, Berkhamstead three. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home school up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, that's great tackle! Oh. It's not good enough. One, two, skip a few and with the wheels. Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What a kick! Where did he come from? And how did that happen? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 15. So you rejoin us here at Trinity School. It's Trinity 3, Berkhamstead 3, half time in this under 18 Schools Cup quarterfinal. The winners of this, I can reveal, having spoken to the RFU this morning, will be hosting Sherburn in the semi final in March. The other semi final will be Barnard Castle against Kirkham Grammar School. Good knowledge. Well, uh, you know, you've got to, you've got to do what you can. We love an inside trap. Well, ju just a, an indoor PR department for the RFU on these things. You know, someone's got to get the info out there. So, a chance of a home game against Sherburn in the semi-finals at stake in this second half. Three all it is. Berkhamstead kick off, and they go deep into the 22. And that man Bellamy is underneath it, and we saw how dangerous he was at the end of that first half, and he's. Bobby and Weaving at the start of the second as well. Sends the ball deep. Elliot now hanging back in the deep channels. And why not? Thumps it long. And as we began the first half, we begin the second with a bit of kick tennis. And Elliot is again in the backfield. I don't know if he's shifted position at half-time or if he's just found himself there, but we'll keep an eye on that one. Yeah, he he's got a solid boot on him, so I think that's why they're putting him back there. Playing into a slight wind, 
playing from left to right on our screen, Berkhamsted. So they'll be looking to try and keep that ball away from their half. They'll be looking to play a territory game, I'd imagine, in the second half and try and play as much as they can in the Trinity half. Yeah, absolutely. And we sort of saw as the half went on, Trinity started with their really tight, um, controlled game. Berkhamsted got the ball. They looked as if they were trying to be a bit more expansive. Couldn't quite do it at all times, but that looked like the general plan for them was to play a bit wider if they could. Yeah, I've been really impressed with the width of, of both defences, actually. Sometimes when you get caught in those tight battles, the tendency is to, to sort of tighten up in defence, get sucked in a little bit, and then the ball's on out wide. But on no occasions have I really looked out and thought, oh, this is on as long as they can just get it out. And, and that's obviously prevented those options for the, for the attacking players. So clever play from both teams. Yeah, it almost feels like a moment of magic somewhere. It could well be the difference here. And we've seen a few of those in recent weeks. Hold, 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 hold. I feel like we're at a bit of a stalemate oh, in this game at the answer. moment, and I think the next team who score, I think it's just going to give them that encouragement to just sort of play and stretch the legs a little tackle bit. I feel now, tackle, both sides very even and equal at the moment, and I think whoever gets the next score, I think that's going to give them the ascendancy. Definitely, and Berkhamsted, as we were saying, looking wide. Daniel Barnett on the right wing there. And they're looking to stretch it into the midfield now, getting it through the hands with good efficiency now. The Hertfordshire side. Elliot fizzed across the defence. And his tight head, Charlie Keith, sensibly gives it to the gas man out wide. Beckham said definitely using a lot more depth in their attack. Trying to get those Trinity players to, to lose their structure and lose their connection to try and get a bit of broken field like that. And Elliot on the charge, Elliot charging through, but what a hit from Bellamy in defence. Last gas stuff, and he may well have saved Let's Berkhamsted. So Trinity, rather, as Berkhamsted still go on, charging Tackle around the fringes. They're right up against the touchline on the left-hand side here, looking for the first score in this game. It was Elliot that made the break. Finn McDonald that he gave the offload to. And it's all slowed down now. Trinity getting low to make the tackles and getting the turnover as well. And over the top of the ball was the open side. Of course it was Will Pert Smith. Thank you. Trinity will be so buoyed by that. That'll give them such a boost in confidence. Every time Burke instead have come into their 22, they've remained resolute. That defense has held firm. That's going to be a massive confidence boost for them. Finn will go for as much distance as he can here on this kick. What about that tackle from Bellamy? Yeah, for someone who's very slight and small, he is absolutely enormous in defence. And he's exactly the type of guy that you want as your last man in defence because he very, very rarely misses a tackle. And he absolutely loves whacking people. That is... The 75 kilo fullback, Josh Bellamy, on the big old second row. <laughs> Finn McDonald there. That's outstanding work from the young fullback. Trinity, haul the ball down. Burke instead. Bring it to deck. Referee seems to be happy with it, though, but Kennedy clears his lines anyway, under less pressure than he has been in doing so. Such was the momentum. Westcott bangs it downfield and Bellamy spotted some space, doesn't catch it as he wanted, but it just skips off the surface. The yeah, really before lucky that that bounced before, before it went into touch. Just a little miss kick then from Bellamy. I was hoping he might stretch his legs then. I'd like to see him one-on-one -on, -one on those defenders. They were fairly wide. Force them to make that decision, potentially leave the kick a little bit later. I can see what he was trying to do, but he'd be disappointed with that effort. Yeah, it was a shame for him. We know what good kicker he is. As it is, though, in a game as tight as this, any kind of territory is going to be important, and Berkhamsted are going to have work to do to get out of their own half as Isaac throws in. Up now, Robenheimer to Elliot. Elliot showing a full range of skills this afternoon. Bit of confusion about which way Berkhamsted are going to go. They go left, 
through Tackle Charlie two. Keith, the yeah. big man. Yeah. Thank you. Flat. Tight through the fringes here. Now they look wide. Robenheimer, fast ball, but it's fast defence from Trinity. Yeah. Lining up that tackle wait on Boylan from Thank miles you. away. Will Pert Smith, part of that tackle, he's starting to have a real influence on the game. The young open side, Bellamy. Well, he's already had an influence, hasn't he? And he's fizzing around in the backfield, gives it out. That's Trinity the keeping the ball alive on the attack. Bellamy the spark once again. Taking it tight again. Burn now gets his hands on the ball. Defense is up fast on him, but he still gets the offload away. A couple of times now we've seen Burn with that late offload. Such calm presence under pressure. Berkhamstead with the big hit this time. These two really putting a shift in defensively. No space given for either side. Cleaning out one each, thank you. Trinity now on the charge. At least 14 red, yeah. Down the blind side. Short again they go, and we're starting to see a slow return to that tactic. So successful in the early parts of the first half, but less so in this early part of the second half as Berkhamstead make another big tackle, forcing the knock on in contact. Yeah, floor. Trinity just got caught there with just one out runners. The support not in close enough. You're always going to be under pressure there. And the referee's always going to be looking to think, yeah, he's a little bit isolated there. So he needed a couple of players to come in and just help him in that tackle. Three Berkhamstead defenders just dislodging that ball from Will Pert Smith there. Both sides with relentless defensive physicality though. Yeah, absolutely enormous. You've got to remember this is still schoolboy rugby. Lots of lower six boys out there. Still got another year of schoolboy rugby left in them. Leave him. Thank you. That's good. Much better. Certainly do as Elliot takes it on the crash. Hands away, leave it white. Take him back to him. Robenheimer. Half charge down. But that could work out for Trinity. As they They're search for space. Stop, sir. Okay, yes, yeah, stop 19. It's good. My ball almost reclaimed, but not quite. Trinity scrum. The crowd alongside that one, and they are truly buoyed by that. Yeah, I think Trinity will be pleased because I think they're feeling like their, their pressure is causing Berkhamstead to kick. Um, their kick returns are very much territorial, looking to try to get the ball out of field back in the Berkhamstead half. But yeah, both teams under so much pressure that they're just not able to, to play that free-flowing rugby that they might be used to and accustomed to against teams who aren't, as, aren't quite as solid in defence. Certainly are, and if, uh, if David was here, I think he'd probably have a word to say with the Trinity scrum half Hang about on, the side of the Come scrum on. that the ball has been put in on. So that's why I'm here, and I wonder why he was there. I'll go that way now. Referee okay. spots it, though, so we're all good. Booker was about to have an unusual experience there. Get the left foot out. Kennedy, Set. back on the correct side of the scrum. So not his first game at scrum half, is it? Just be careful now. That's good, no, thank not... You. Not always been a nine. Played 10 for quite a lot of, this, of his time. Either way, he's fed his back line and they are absolutely flying through, almost up to the Berkhamstead 22. Ball slightly slow for them, but they still have numbers. If they can look up, they've got space on the right-hand side. Berkhamstead flood defenders around there and slow the ball nicely. So they come back with Burn on the other side, but the defence is up so fast. Berkhamstead really working hard to get their pressure up. Brilliant pass from Kennedy, though. Releases Matabalavu down the left-hand side. Ball going everywhere, and it's a Trinity penalty in the end. Yeah, quite cynical there from Berkhamstead coming in from the side at the ruck there, just taking out the player. Okay. Injury, please, gentlemen. Trinity very lucky to still retain possession of that ball. It was bobbling around everywhere. I was quite surprised when, when Sean ended up with possession on, on the ground there. Well, first we see the break. Matabalavu. He's an outstanding runner. Normally plays number eight. 
uh, but just so much pace and power on him. Eight slash wing. Oh, he's so dynamic off the back of the scrum. Well, he certainly showed that dynamism. Two good bits of work in the same couple of phases of possession. Trinity almost with the try scoring chance, but they'll have a five metre line out. Yeah, need clean ball here. They really need to make sure that they look after possession here. And then I think we'll see some close, more work here from the Trinity boys. Sinclair, part of the Scottish yeah, Exiles, puts it in. It's a trick play at the line out. They shift it to create a second ball. To the tail, Berkhamstead working very hard in that ball. But Trinity are as well, almost up to the try line. Inches short now, right in front of our commentary position here. Hands away, please. Around the corner they go, this, and across the line, it's the first try of the game, and it's Trinity that have got it. That's outstanding. Trinity will have worked so hard at that. Ian Kench, the forwards coach, will have taught them to just keep their composure, keep their patience, and know that they're just inching away, inching closer and closer to that try line. Really well-deserved try there from Trinity. I feel that's really just reward for the amount of pressure that they've had and, and the possession and territory that they've had in this second half. And we saw the trick play at the line-out, or the clever play at the line-out, to shift the point of contact. Berkhamstead were almost trying to pull it down, but couldn't succeed in pulling it down. And then Trinity, as we saw early in the first half, just playing around the corner, around the corner, and eventually across the line. Yeah, I think some frustration as well that Berkhamstead looked like they're just trying to pull those malls down. Certainly the number six at, at the last line-out, hanging off with his bum almost touching the ground. And we'll just work to find you that try score as Bellamy's conversion goes over for an 11-3 win. Trinity try scorer, with, sadly without a, a number on his back, but we will work on that one for you. I was too excited cheering I was to, to be looking, I'm afraid. We'll work him out soon, but what a try it was from Trinity. When you're ready, sir. Time in. Trinity then lead 11-3. As it stands, they go through to the Under-18 Schools Cup semi-finals, but there's a long way left in this game. And Berkhamstead with a chance to counter through Tobias Elliott, the danger man. He's dealt with well, but gets the offload away. Crucial now for Trinity to hold on to this lead for a sustained period. Berkhamstead with a job on their hands now. Daily Mail Trophy title in the bag, but they want more. Tackle they want this school's please. cup as well. Seven, that's good. Leave it, leave it. Thank you. They come short now. Shift the point of contact. Staying please, all within you. this tight area, though, on the 10 meter line as Rovenheimer looks to put more width on it. And now through Elliott, they find it. Finally get themselves a bit of no, no, front football. No, no, no. Trinity doing well not That's to good. compete on the floor at the referee's insistence. <laughs> getting through the hands. Trinity are up fast, but Berkham said doing a, doing a good job of getting those offloads away just to allow themselves to make that extra bit of yardage. The first up tackles from Trinity, really, really good. Short look on the blind side, and it's another offload from Berkhamstead and another couple of yards gained. These small offloads making all the difference here. Superb bit of one mound clear out work from Berkhamstead there. Threatening looking ruck. Trinity were looking to compete, and they compete at this one, and they compete hard. And it's the try scorer, Joe Marvin. Joe Marvin. The flanker he rolled away, seven, and the second mate scored a try, try ball, gets a crucial first turnover. Attempt, first attempt, he was turning the ball. And you can tell why Harlequins are interested in this young fella. Two big plays in a couple of minutes. minutes so yeah, really clever play minutes. there just off the ball from Ollie Bailey at 13. He came up really fast out wide, and that just got in the eye line of the 10 who knew he couldn't pass out wide. It's just forcing Berkhamstead to just keep passing and keep having to take the ball into contact, and, and it's working for Trinity at the moment. That's good, sir. Thank you. That's 
It certainly is, yeah. As you can see at the top of your screen, Ollie Bailey comes charging up just to cut that passing lane out. Knows that he's got time to swim back in defense if he needs to, if the ball does get a bit wider. Trinity just about okay, secure the line out. Feet went into five. It's at the tail now. No, he's not. Leave the leg, leave the leg. That's good. Legs. Burke no, instead. Quiet. Managed to get the ball to There's deck. No, he was fine, but, then he knocked but it it'll be a Trinity scrum. Burke instead knocking it on. Country the mall is good. an Knock absolute dogfight at the moment. Both sides giving absolutely everything at it. There's your mark. Knocked off. Trinity get the scrum after Berkhamstead try no, to plow yes. through and yes. spill yes. the ball uh, as did. they do it. Him to leave it and he did. I, absolutely. Okay, you're doing a sub? No, you're doing no, you're not doing a sub, okay. There, sir. That's the chance so, start to ring around so, here at Trinity on. School. Thank you. Their side have an 11-3 lead. Crow! Hold it. No, guys, I have to think of safety, okay? Yeah, should we step then? Yeah, please. Thank you. But gentlemen, that was a slip, okay? But safety is what I have to do, okay? Apologies there for a few score gremlins. We're just getting that back for you. The score is in fact Trinity 10, Berkhamstead 3. Trinity with a seven point lead. They've scored a converted try and a penalty. Berkhamstead had leveled things earlier from the early Trinity penalty at three all. But a try from Joe Marvin, the difference between the two at the moment. But Berkhamstead have a penalty here because Trinity drifted offside in the kick chase and that's being policed much more stringently this year. Yeah, just a timing okay, issue yeah. there from Roma out on the wing. Just got okay, caught ahead of the ball as Finn kicked, uh, as Bellum, uh, Josh Offside. Bellamy kicked it through. And then the referee, I mean, we could hear it from here. Calling him back just offside and in front That's of the it. kicker. Disappointing there from Trinity. They'll be hoping yes, that they could have been up the other end of the field oh, sorry, then. Yeah, first, 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 first. Very hard to hear the referee sometimes, though, oh, I think. Yeah, so, but you've got I'm often told yeah, by coaches, let's just listen to the ref, but you know, when, when your heart rate's yeah, at 180 you and you're blowing, you it's tough. It may just be me, though. I'm not that fit. I'm normally the one refereeing, yes. and I can and I can barely hear anything over my own <laughs> over my own breathlessness. Burke and said in Trinity though, Tackle! showing some great fitness. Yeah. The energy sapping nature of the yeah. defence here has been enormous, and Trinity are about to have to go through another no, no, not, heavy no, set of defending. They're doing well to get off the line faster and do so again here. Big hit coming through on Berkhamstead. They're playing a little tighter no, than they were. Another big Tackle. hit from Trinity. Tackle. These boys are up for it. Driven the ball back 10 yards in the last couple of phases. So now Berkhamstead look to go wider, but once again, this defense is relentless. Back feet. Berkhamstead just hoping if they can hold on to possession for a while, perhaps they can sap the energy. But again, a fourth big tackle in four phases from Trinity, forcing Robenheimer to dart himself. Does well, actually, to make a tiny bit of ground. Gets some quick ball, and Elliot gets the ball through the hands now. And finally, Berkhamstead no, get themselves on the front foot. But you Trinity just no, 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 lose no, no. a bit of discipline with a bit of side entry. And a bit of back chat Thank means you. we're moving forward 10 yards and Thank all you. that good defensive work slightly wasted now. Joe Connolly getting really frustrated there. Just needs to keep his cool and keep his composure. The team don't need to give away any yards in a game like this. It'll be really costly for them. They've just done so well there to, to push Berkhamstead back into their own half with that defence. Just unnecessary there. And I think the trouble is that Connolly thought it was him that got, that got pinged. He was fine. It was the man coming in next for the second clear out that came in from the side. Down there. 
Uh, yeah, really good been. lesson to, to young players watching that ultimately I've never watched a referee injured, change his decision based on an appeal from a player. So it's only ever going to go one way in a, in a conversation like that. Yeah, and, that and especially Joe not being the captain either, just really yeah, important okay. for them to keep their discipline and remember that they just don't need to be having those conversations with the ref. Best tip I can ever give a young kid for talking to a ref. Always ask the question after you've done something right that they agree, well, agree with. And it's, were you happy with that? So was that the picture you're looking for? Gets them on side really early. It's hard, isn't it? Emotions are running so high and it means so much to these players that you've kind of pumped them up, you get them so up for the challenge and then you're asking them to, to have the utmost levels of self-restraint when they're on the pitch and they think and they feel maybe aggrieved or that just something's wait, not quite gone their way. Okay. Very difficult lesson to learn, but on, now's the right okay. place give, give and the right time to do it. Certainly is. Berkhamstead with the line out inside the Trinity 22. Trinity though. That's not gone. Spill it in the line out, but they did well to get a finger on it. Yeah, they'll still be pleased that they're disrupting and not, not giving Berkhamstead that, that clean ball that they want. But disappointing that it's just been knocked on there and we'll go back for a Berkhamstead scrum. Well, it was oh, fingertip stuff. Yeah, do you want to move? Should we just go, look, boys, I'll had give the, you one Had the plan, lift right? been but Sorry, half a second five. earlier, he would have been at the peak of his jump, gathering that out. in, and Trinity would be clearing their lines right now. As it stands, it's Berkhamstead with the scrum. This whole right-hand side of the pitch available to them. The near side as you look at it. And we've seen what they can do if they can get the ball wide. Getting it through the hands of that 10-12 combination of Robenheimer and Elliot. Robenheimer takes it to the line. He sends it to Elliot short. And he is well met. That is brave defence from Trinity. And it's that man, Mata Balavu, standing up to be counted. The number eight in him there. Elaine does well to roll away from that tackle. He was almost trapped in. Berkhamstead looking tight now. 15 metres away. The Hertfordshire side. Robenheimer on the front foot gets it wide, but it's taken down. I think it was Elliot tackled there. And Berkhamstead give away the penalty as Trinity get themselves over the ball. What a fantastic moment for the home side. A crucial play. Massive involvement there from Sean Ogunyemi. He came flying up. If he'd missed that tackle, that was an absolutely certain try because he was the widest player short of Bellamy at fullback. So a really, really key intervention from him there. A huge moment. That was the danger trio, the 10, 12, 13 combination of Berkhamstead working a move there. Panesi coming short, or Panesi rather, I should say, coming short. Or Robenheimer went out the back to Elliot. But Elliot met with tremendous force from Ogunyemi. Yeah, I've been really impressed with some of the running lines from the Berkhamstead players this second half. They've really had to work harder to try and change their points of attack. Lots of deception coming in, lots of dummy runners, and yeah, it just if it, if it wasn't for the Trinity defence, I think uh, they would have been racking up the scores by now. Well, yeah, I mean, it is a classic case of certainly in the last five, ten minutes or so of attack v defence, and just both sides giving no inch. Burn nudges this one up to about the halfway line. You just take the Trinity and a bit of welcome respite for them. Thank you. All on the line, please. That's you, guys. Yeah, that's you. Thank you. Yeah, that's excellent. Thank you. Trinity shorten the line out slightly. Go to the tail. Cummins does well to gather that one in as he was coming down. No, not get it up, pull it down. Penalty advantage. Referee says this one's been pulled down and it'll be a penalty Trinity on the halfway line and a chance to get this ball deep into the 22. And then he pulled it. Number four. Forget your laces nine in a moment, yeah? Yeah, let's do it. Clock is off, guys. Just why he does laces. A good little moment from Young Connor Byrne there, tactical shoelace tie. Clock is now back off. Finn Kennedy, rather, didn't spot the nine shirt. 
sensible work. They may well have really been undone, but I'm a cynic at heart. Berkhamstead pulling that mall down. That's what gives them the penalty. Trinity up to just shy of the 22. And the referee now will have an eagle eye on how Berkhamstead deal with what is surely going to be a Trinity Mall and is, but it's spilled backwards according to the referee, though. No, he hasn't done anything, sir. That's all right. Kennedy feeds his side. A short game from Trinity again. This is where they've been finding joy in this game in these tight channels. Byrne feeds it no wide to Bellamy. Bellamy darts back inside, evading tacklers this way, and that gets the offload away. And now the space and numbers out on this left-hand touchline on your near side. Big tackle coming in from Berkhamstead, but Trinity are on the front foot. Slowish ball, though, so they go tight again. The try scorer, Marvin, on the charge now. And they will keep this tight. Use it. All bar two of the Trinity players are within four or five metres of this ruck. They are looking to keep this as tight as possible and it is working. They are making ground, the home side. 10-3 up as it stands, searching for that decisive scoreline with just 10 minutes left in the game. Two scores would be a long way back for Berkhamstead to come from as Marvin goes around the fringe again. The Berkhamstead defence is resolute though. So now Byrne takes it on the front foot, darting in. Well cleared by his teammates. But Berkhamstead come up with the play. And it's James Boylan getting his hands over the ball. Just got a little bit too congested in there. Referee wasn't able to see the ball clearly. Couldn't quite see what the infringement was there. The ball just came loose. And I think it was just James Boylan getting himself in that low body position over the ball. Yeah, that was outstanding from him. Such a good body position, clearly supporting his body weight and targeting the ball so well. That's such a key skill for young players to have. And he's executed that brilliantly and just at the right moment as well to give him time some, to give his team some reprieve and clear out of their 22. Need a long way to go. He's a tall lad. As I said, Skipper, you'll be rewarded. Brief delay, a couple of injuries here, which gives me just a chance to mention the University of Bristol, another one of our partners, and there'll be a few lads on both of these sides, no doubt, considering them as they go through their UCAS options at the moment. University of Bristol, a fantastic rugby programme as well, operating in the Bucks Premier South. They're in contention for that playoff spot, the chance to go for Bucks Super Rugby, but whether or not they make it, it's a great spot to marry your rugby and your education they've put a real premium on the education fantastic university university of bristol with program there headed up by joe goodman here at trinity school the home side would lead 10 points to three against berkhamstead berkhamstead of course as i've mentioned the daily mail trophy champions but this is all about the under 18 schools cup it's a quarter final stage the winner of this one is going to be at home again against Sherburn. And we saw what a side that Sherburn unit is in their quarterfinal last week. It's going to be an enthralling battle, that one, whoever wins this. It's enthralling here at Trinity. Berkhamstead win clean ball at the line-out. Robenheimer feeds Elliott again. We've said that how many times today? That pattern has definitely been a theme. Berkhamstead on the charge through the midfield. Trinity not rolling away. Berkhamstead with the penalty. Elliot will look to go as deep as he possibly can here. Might just have missed the touch though. Gives Bellamy the chance to chase it down, but slips as he gathers. The side under a bit of pressure now, but if I know a man that's going to stand up to that, it's Mata Balavu. And look at the way he is standing there up to that, charging around the long way on the arc. What a thumping bit of work from Matabalavu, earns his side the penalty. 
Well, 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 Roma Matabalavu. I thought he might make two or three yards and save his team, but he's gone and made almost half a pitch. Wait, another knock on the head. He will be very, very grateful for the Christmas break, <laughs> as his body will, I would imagine. Go down on one knee, go on the head again. Storming work. Seven tries this season already for the Harlequins. Under 18 player. But what a bit of work that is. Storming around the long way. What is it they say about never run sideways? Ignore that. Run sideways and then run very straight. Superb work for the young man. Fijian heritage, a Fijian father and an Irish mother, and we well, we saw both parts of that, didn't we? Yeah, absolutely. He loves nothing more than a big collision, and and he lined him up there. You could see he was never going to accept that contact. But a really, really good bit of play from him to to get Bellamy out of trouble, who I'm definitely going to buy an extra long pair of studs for for Christmas because he's been sliding around all day, like he's on ice skates. Yeah, but they're not cool. This is so true. Seven minutes, okay? I say as a man who's always had long studs. Tell me they weren't the old an ankle boots, please. Sa sadly, ne never needed, never had ankles that needed that much support. Happy? Kept my running nice and Lock straight. Back up. In at the side, he was offside. There's your mark, the white line, please. Game about to restart. Yes. Mata Balavu is okay. I think he could run through a brick wall and be okay, to be honest. Trinity with the penalty after that run. Pump it in. It's up to about the 10 metre line. Let's see if they can ride that momentum from that play. Bit of the sting of it taken out by the delay. Yeah, to, to be honest, it's something like that really lifts a team because it just buoys the whole group. What it also does is make Berkhamstead think twice about kicking it his way, moving. having seen the damage he can do. You are still moving. But Berkhamstead That's good. causing the carnage front. in them all. But Trinity managed to get safe possession, and now they look wide. Bellamy stabs it through. Will the ball stay in field? Not quite, but it may just hold up. We could be looking at a goal line dropout. No, Berkhamstead. Don't want that, so they hoof it clear. But now Bellamy has a chance for some open field. He's got numbers outside him. I don't know if he's going to give it until late, though. Instead, it's blocked by Barnett. And I think, well, I don't know that Barnett had any choice in the matter. And as long as it's not a penalty try, he will think that that is a good outcome in that situation. I think if we had a TMO, that would be potentially a penalty try. There were no defenders left, and there were at least three attackers. Was too far to go for penalty well, I think, yeah. I think if I'm Daniel Barnett there, I'm thinking that was a good decision. We'll take a yellow card for that because that was try all over there. And Berkhamstead, with six minutes on the clock, cannot afford to concede another try. But Trinity, well, they're going to be going all out for it. They've got a five metre line out here and they will be going for it. Look at Bellamy here, just surges onto the ball, gives the late ball. And well, there was a lot of drift. By staying back after his kick then, he knew that there was likely to be a kick chase because obviously it was the uh, Berkhamstead player who was the last man back. So all of those players that he was running across the front of were all offside because they were all in front of the kicker. So he knew he had that space. Well, as we said in the first half, it's intelligent play, isn't it? This, though, is brute force play from Trinity. Ball at the tail of them all, charging towards the line. Are they going to go over? Yes, they are. It's dotted down over the line. The crowd go wild. Trinity over the try line. Pierce Cummins, the second row, reaching out one of those bionic arms. And Trinity have their second try of the game. And a lead that is going to be so difficult to claw back now for Berkhamstead. Such an outstanding bit of play there from Trinity. These boys are playing rugby that most professional players would be really, really proud of. Because to keep control at the back of a line out like that, under so much pressure, is so difficult and you, it requires so much patience. And Cummins had to work hard to get the ball down. First time he tried it, one of his own players' feet was in the way. 
Luckily, he managed to get it down the second time as Bellamy lines up the kick. He's got two from two so far. Make that three from three, and Trinity are 17-3 seven, uh, up against Berkhamstead, sorry, in this under-18 Schools Cup quarterfinal. As it stands, Trinity going through to the semi-finals and inflicting a first defeat of the season on Berkhamstead. They've got six minutes to hold out. It's going to be a tense one. Job one done. Restart Use gathered safely. Berkhamstead. No, they need to compete and do hard. Charged down by the loose head, James Isaac, I think it was. And now they're on the front foot. Bob. Bobbed around, but I think the referee's going to pull it back. Conversation with the touch judge. He thinks there's a forward pass. Forward pass. Scrum down, Trinity ball. Well, the charge down there almost breaking Trinity hearts, but Trinity. They say that you're. They say that you're most vulnerable when you've just scored, and that was a real heart in the mouth moment there from Finn kicking yeah, so that again it's same same issues as in the first half just not okay. getting enough protection in there before he's putting boots ball just need to slow things down and control it a little bit if that's what the option is that he's going to take thank you for the clock when I start now clock will start when I'm here guys well from full volume around the ground here the clock is sort of deathly silence has hung over hearts in mouths for the Trinity support there's a tiny pocket in one corner Keeping themselves going. Five, six. Now let's hold it, guys. Let's do it again. We'll reset the scrum. Trinity will be grateful for that. The ball was at the back, probably playable, but Berkhamstead just a little bit wobbly on the loose head side as they came forward. It's all over in the under 14s game to our right-hand side. We'll try and find out some info from that one here in the under-18s game. That way, okay. Trinity Just with the put-in on their own try line. Five, six. This could be the match right here. If they can clear their lines, there's surely not enough time for Berkhamstead to score two. Clock and with off, every guys. second That's that ticks right, by, it's another second. The Trinity it's don't the need to worry off. about. Clock, yes, the clock is off. One and a half. Berkhamstead. Right, while he's injured, the clock well, it's been off. such a tough week, hasn't it? Two games yep, in three days. Sealing that title after all of that hard work this season on Saturday. It and they off, want yes, this game fine. so much. But it John, has been a physio, such please? a brutal physical affair. The time is off. Take Bodies as as everywhere. The tiredness setting in for both sides. The minutes counting down. About 90 seconds left here. Wow. That's OK. Sherburn watching on on screen, no doubt. OK, yeah. Boys, should we step? Boys, should we step? Preparing oh, themselves probably for That's a trip to Croydon. In early March. Clock's not on yet. Okay. So we set. Balls of Kenchi Kenchi coming from the uh, from the bank. Think where you're both are. I'll deal with that in a minute. Okay. I'll deal with that. No doubt in response to the man who has engineered this line out, the mall, and a lot of the forwards play. And together with Mr. Roberts, has just been such an outstanding coaching team for these boys throughout this season. Do it again, guys. Have to be safe. Have to be safe. We are coming back for another reset. It's Both like international That's rugby, you, this. On our That's third or fourth yeah. reset in this scrum. Crucial law to remember, under 18 level, if the, they can only push for a metre and a half. And that one was just coming around a bit. That's why the referee said he's worried about safety. So we'll go again. Bye. Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. Everyone likes scrums? Boys, I've cut the clock off again. I'm gonna ask, right, We're listen, not even listen, really listen. watching a scrum, six, are we? It's six, not six, even really here. got All to that point yet. Come on, come on. 
Just a six, just a six. When you want the six, when you want Beckhamstead probably rightly stuff. getting a little okay. bit frustrated here because the, the clock is running every time to these scrums go to set. And as you say, eating away at their time to try and get back into this game, even if it might just be a step too far at this stage. What do you think of the idea for get school rugby? Because, you know, it's just schoolboys, but do you think up at the top end of the game, the idea of pausing the clock for uh, for scrums until the ball's away? Um, I'm much more in favour, to be honest, of, of having a limit on the number of resets. Uh, and I think that way you just get the ball in play more often. Um, well, we've got the ball in play now. Finally, Trinity with a penalty. A chance to clear their lines. There is no time left for Berkhamstead to score two. Trinity are going to win this game. The only question is, is it going to be in five seconds or is it going to be in 30? It looks like it's going to be in five. Kennedy. Oh, and from his body angle, I thought he was going for the short kick, but in fact, he's gone long. He didn't take the tap, of course, and we still do have time on the clock. Getting yeah. ahead of myself there. They, they asked that. I did hear them on the ref's mic asking whether it was last play, and he said no. So, yeah, if it had been last play, then they definitely would have tapped it and kicked it out. Game over, but... Hoping that they can, hoping okay, that Ross is fit enough play. to Sorry, throw this ball in anyway. and get the ball off the field. Well, oh, referee has said that this one is the last play. All Trinity need to do now is gather this no, safely and get the ball off the field. And they will be through to the under 18 Schools Cup semi finals. Instead, they go short, try and make a charge down the blind side. His hands are in touch. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It is all over. Trinity have won this game 17 points to three against Berkhamstead. The Daily Mail Trophy champions beaten for the first time this season. Trinity going mad. Our commentary colleague, David Bampoe on the field celebrating with his mates. It'll be a semi-final for Trinity for Berkhamstead. This incredible season ends now. They've been magnificent all year, but it was a tremendous performance from Trinity. Their defensive play was outstanding, but what it all came down to was that tight work in the mall. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I, I think we've seen glimpses today of, of the fact that Trinity are a very well-rounded team. They've got some dangerous runners in the backs. They've got some outstanding play, but ultimately they're such a strong, dominant team in the forwards and with such yeah, c a consistency across their set piece. They're, they're going to be a tough side for anyone who comes up against them. They certainly are. The first side to claim the scalp of Berkhamstead all season. If that doesn't tell you that this Trinity side has to be taken incredibly, incredibly seriously in these semi-finals, then nothing will. An absolutely epic performance in terms of physicality from both sides in truth. But it was Trinity's that won out. That tight work in the mall, we saw it right from the opening minutes as the players and the coaches all shake hands and look of despondency on some of the Berkhamstead faces. For Trinity, it's just pure joy. They will be hosting Sherburn in early March in the Under-18 Schools Cup semi-finals. And that is going to be some game. Yeah, just so exciting from a Trinity rugby perspective of what, as well, with nine of these boys still only being in lower sixth and a really dominant under-16 side coming through underneath them. So I think Trinity rugby for the next few years certainly is, is set to continue and really just showing everybody who's watching and, and certainly any, everyone who follows the results just what a force to be, re force to be reckoned with Trinity is and certainly come on leaps and bounds over the last few years and so many players enjoying their rugby across all the age groups. Our under 12s play A to I teams. So you've got almost whole year groups out there playing at a time when I know rugby is dwindling in some areas of the country. And, and performances like this and getting through to a semi-final will, will literally just lift the whole school. And, and I would say that most of the school were out here this afternoon watching anyway. So great scenes for, for them. They certainly are great scenes. We saw there the two tries from the Moors. But as you say, school rugby, rugby in general, suffering a little bit at the moment. But what we've seen in the last three or four live streams here with Next Gen 15 is what it means, not just to the players on the field, but to the whole school community. It's 
it's not just about the game it's about it being something that the whole school can rally around and feel part of a community and that really is the whole point of school absolutely and uh, and the ethos here at trinity is that it's it's a very outward facing school so they do a lot in the community um we host lots of events here for for local primary schools and and do lots of great work we had a lunch here for 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 some of the local school teachers to to enable them the opportunity to come and watch and yeah i just think this for for schools rugby is just such a great advert for for what school boys can achieve and, and I think hopefully these guys will go on to, to bigger and better things um, when they leave school but really lovely to see the boys that have been part of that wider squad um, so boys that have played in the earlier rounds um, involved in that squad and, and, and they are really such a close-knit team uh, and that shone through today they were they were playing for the name on the front of their shirt not the name on the back of their shirt today and and that's really lovely to see and something that really embodies this school and and what it stands for um, and, and couldn't be proud of the boys today to be honest and I, I know that that's what the coaches will be saying today just how proud of them they are and how pleased with them they are and, and go and have a good rest over Christmas. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got evidence of just how proud you are of that. As they scored their vital try, you were bouncing away in the corner here. This is what it means, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's embarrassing. <laughs> You did a very good job of staying neutral, though, on the mic. It's very difficult. I found it very difficult, but all credit to Berkhamsted. I mean, what an outstanding season they've had and, and credit to... I know there's been some critics on social media that have argued um, about their status as one of the top schoolboy um, rugby schools in the country, but they showed that today. They showed their calibre. They showed that they've got players from 1 to 18 who are capable of playing at the very highest level. And, uh, and I think they brought such a, a fantastic game today. It was such a dogfight for most of that game. And, and although the, the scoreline... 17-3 looks quite dominant. I, I feel like it wasn't necessarily a reflection of, of just how hard they fought today and just how capable they are as a, as a group of players. So I, I hope they go away with their heads held high. I hope they can remember the jubilation of, of Saturday and, and lifting the Daily Mail crown because they are a, a really fantastic schoolboy side and it's been such a privilege and an honour to be able to commentate today and, and watch them all in action. So yeah, really thoroughly well deserved to them and, uh, and we thank them for, for coming all the way down here today and, and bringing such a good game to the, to the pitch. Well, as you say, the uh, Daily Mail Trophy title going to Berkhamsted, the St. Joseph's Festival going to Millfield, but there is one more big 15-a-side title still available in the world of schoolboy rugby, and that is the Under-18 Schools Cup. Trinity are into the semi-finals of that. A 17-3 victory here against Berkhamsted. They will be hosting Sherburn in the next round. Barnard Castle will be ho hosting Kirkham Grammar School as well. There are four fantastic teams through to the semi-finals. From here at Trinity School, from myself, Angus Savage, and from Stashi along alongside me, and of course, David Bampoe, who was here briefly. It's a very good evening. Good night. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home school up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, that's great. That's all here. Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What a kick! All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 15.